a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in Exploring ETFs. Hi everyone, welcome to Exploring ETFs. I'm Nina Mishra and today we are talking about the best performing ETFs of the first half of 2021 and after a remarkable rally last year stocks have continued their run upwards higher this year as well so far this year and all three major indexes are now trading at or near their all-time highs defying all the concerns about valuations to inflation to rising rates and this was in fact one of the best first halves for the S&P 500 index and second best uh, since Gen since 1998 that is according to Bloomberg data S&P 500 index gained 16% so far this year the Dow Jones is up about 15% and the Nasdaq has gained 13% after a very strong run last year. And in fact, the S&P 500 is now up more than 90% from its COVID-driven uh, lows in March last year. So congratulations to all of you who stayed invested and defied all the concerns and fear-mongering and haters, uh, because that is the best way to make money. You buy best companies, you best buy best uh, ETFs and stay invested. Now looking at uh, sectors, Energy was the best performing sector this year so far. It has gained 46%. Financials is the second best performing, up about 25%. Uh, worst performing sectors are utilities and consumer staples, which are up about 2 and 3% this year. Now, earlier this year, value outperformed growth, and value so far this year is up about 19%, and growth is up about 14%. But over the past few weeks, we have seen that growth has come back very strongly. Now, going forward, in the second half also, stocks continue their rally of if the first half was so remarkable. That is uh, according to historical data uh, and according to the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg. Uh, now, another uh, reason why stocks can continue their rally despite rising concerns about inflation and a possible Fed tapering and also a possible uh, uh, tax hike, capital gains tax hike. Uh, the reason is there is no alternative to stocks. In a rising inflationary environment and rising rate environments, bonds underperform stocks. Bonds are the worst asset class in that scenario. So stocks, particularly of companies that can raise, that have the pricing power, and they are the best investment in this scenario. So stocks may continue to rally, although it may be a bit volatile. And also retail investors still have a lot of money and they believe that stocks can continue to rally. And if they continue pouring money into stocks, stocks can continue their, continue their stock, strong performance in the second half as well. Now the three ETFs which did very well in the first half are a little bit from the very specialized niche categories, but let's take a look at them because they are very interesting, though they are not suitable for long-term holding, they are more suitable for trading purpose. So the best performing ETF this year is a shipping ETF, very specialized ETF. It is the Brake Wave Dry Bulk Shipping ETF, ticker symbol B Dry B D R Y. It is the first and only ETF that provides exposure to freight futures. It holds dry bulk freight futures contracts, uh, and. Uh, I have talked about this ETF in the past videos too. This is a very specialized ETF and this benefited from all the disruptions uh, caused by the pandemic in supply chains and global supply chains, which sent shipping uh, rates very high, shipping rates soaring and shipping rates continue to be very high. It has more than 100 million in assets, but 
it is pricey because of the very specialized exposure that it provides. So it charges 3.32% in uh, expense ratio. It is up over one. 260% year to date. Now to take a look at the CTF, you can go to the code page on sax.com. I in fact did a podcast with the managers. So you can look at, you can listen to the podcast and learn more about the CTF because this is a very specialized CTF. And then again, you can go to the home page and you can learn more about the investment strategy and the kind of futures that it holds. So this, these are the futures, Baltic shipping futures, bulk dry shipping futures that it holds. Now the second ETF uh, that I'm highlighting is by Invesco. It is the Invesco S&P Small Cap Energy ETF, ticker symbol PSCE. Uh, and as I mentioned that energy stocks did very well this year, energy is the best performing sector. This holds energy stock in the S&P small cap 600 index and it's a market cap weighted ETF, has an expense ratio of 29 basis points and 217 million in assets. It is up over 85% this year, and there are many other ETFs which also did pretty well, but I'm not going to talk only about energy ETFs. Uh, so to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the code page, and I re also recently did a podcast on energy stocks and ETFs with Shiraz Mia, who's our director of research and a former oil analyst. So you can look, listen to that podcast to learn more about his outlook on energy now. And you can go to Invesco webpage for this ETF and look at what it holds. This holds smaller energy companies, which you may not be very familiar with, but they did very well this year. Now, the third one, which I'm highlighting is again, a very specialized niche ETF. It is the iPath. Series B Carbon ETN. It is actually an exchange traded note. And I have talked about exchange traded notes, how they differ from ETFs in some past videos. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on what ETNs are, but these are basically debt instruments. So they have the credit risk of the issuer. The ticker symbol is GRN. Now this provides exposure to global carbon market through futures, it tracks a liquidity weighted index of carbon futures. Now end usual users such as power plants, they buy these carbon credits because they have to meet the regulatory requirements of keeping, uh, of restricting their carbon emissions and uh, restricting their greenhouse gas emissions. So that is why this carbon credit mar futures markets is very active. And this ETN provides exposure to that uh, market, but again, a very specialized ETF and you should invest only if you understand in this has an expense ratio of 75 basis points and has a very small 58 million in assets. And this is up about 70% this year. Again, to learn more, you can go to the code page, read our articles, etc., and then go to the external homepage and you can look at other details and learn more about this product, which again, as I said, is very specialized. On the last slide, I have the competitive performance versus the S&P 500 index of these three products. And you will see that the shipping ETF is up almost 300% over the past year. The small cap energy ETF is up more than 160% and the carbon ETN is up more than 120%, whereas the S&P 500 index is up more than 45%, about 45% during this period. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out zax.com slash promo for an interesting offer and make sure to subscribe to our videos so that you do not miss anything. And I'll see you next week.